Yesterday, I made a video and posted on Facebook about my growing frustration with the Gypsy Horse community of um, their constant, these horses can do anything, as if that's a selling point for the horses, because it's not. Um, any horse can do anything, and for a lot cheaper. And when you are marketing anything you have to sit there and think about the flip side what are the downsides what arguments can be made against what you are selling and with the gypsy horse breed obviously what they're selling it's a breed of gypsy horses and i've been paying attention i don't own one but i've been paying attention i've been deeply involved with the community for like 10 years now and um Never have I seen anyone give a legitimate sales pitch for the breed as a whole. Um, whenever somebody says, well, what is a gypsy horse good for? They always give the two same bullshit answers, which is they can do anything and they have amazing temperament. I'm not going to say every horse breed out there typically has the temperament of a gypsy because that'd be a lie, but any breed of horse has its very positives for its temperaments depending on what you want. Like the Akulteki, um, very, very competitive style horse, which is great because they're usually used for competitive disciplines, but I mean, when you start to compare a gypsy horse to a quarter horse is where their entire argument starts to fall apart um because anything a gypsy horse can do a quarter horse can do better and with the exception of like pulling some decent weight but anything that they can do better than a quarter horse could do a fajord or a um halflinger can do just as well and still be cheaper and so I posted and commented about this yesterday, and obviously this is kind of an upsetting topic to a lot of people, and I understand why. It's a little insulting, especially coming from somebody who doesn't own a gypsy horse, but it's a legitimate question that I think the breed as a whole needs to get together and come up with a legitimate answer for, because... Um, my comment yesterday, my, my posting on Facebook about it, did draw somebody to obviously the comment section and they immediately started to try and defend, which is kind of exactly what I was looking for. Because um, I, I, I want the gypsy horse community to start thinking critically about this because anything that they can say for a gypsy horse, I can say about pretty much a draft horse could do better, another draft pony could do it exactly the same for a whole lot cheaper or a quarter horse can do all of it for extremely cheaper so you know she gets on there and she was a little offended at first and she took some offense to it and got defensive about it and you know well maybe if you had saved up your money you'd have one well that's not the point I'm making I didn't save up my money because I had other things I wanted to buy like my Shire horse, who is only four thousand dollars, um, it's gone up a bit more in price since I bought her, but she was only four grand. Um, you're talking about a weanling gypsy is probably six to twelve thousand dollars. An untrained adult is usually anywhere from like eight to fourteen, fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars, depending on if they were like a broodmare or something. And you almost never see a trained gypsy horse for sale. Even the geldings, which you almost never see geldings, period. But most gypsy horses for sale are just not trained. So, and I also bought an expensive property. There are reasons why I don't have a gypsy horse. Um, I have also a heavy clips, and I didn't want any more horses if I was going to have to continue to board. And so, I steered her away from that and I said what arguments can you make for them and it went back and forth for quite a while quite a few comments of where she was like well they can do this and I said yes but a quarter horse can too why should somebody get a gypsy horse instead of a quarter horse 
well, the quarter horse isn't going to pull as much weight. True. But my Shire over there, who was only $4,000, can pull a hell of a lot more weight. And she got, again, a little defensive. And she goes, well, how many people are going to use a Shire for plowing fields? And I actually know a lot of people who do. For one, you have the entire Amish community, although they do usually favor Belgians and Bergerons. Um, really the only reason why shires aren't used more is because there's only about two to three thousand in the world. There's just not that many of them around. Um, but I, I know actually a lot, a lot of owners who use them for draft work, who use them for logging or for pulling boats or for plowing fields. I know a couple of breeders actually who will not breed an untested horse. They will not breed a horse who has not spent a season out in the fields because they want to make sure that these horses remain sound even under work. And so I actually know a lot of people and but shires are not only for draft work. They are also used for six horse hitches and weight pulling competitions and i know a man who uses all of his for not only just draft work but he also competes a lot with weight uh pulling competitions and that's where they just get a sled and they load it up with a bunch of cinder blocks to a certain weight and then get two horses to pull it um which again a gypsy horse is not going to be competitive at now if they have weight classes maybe but then that brings up the argument still of a halflinger or a Fajord, which is in the same general weight class, is going to be able to probably compete really well with them. Be a hell of a lot cheaper, too. Um, but Shires are also hitch horses where they do like the four and the six horse hitches. Kind of like the Clydesdales. Now, a hitch horse is not a cart horse. You could use a draft horse for a cart horse. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, they do have like cart draft horse classes when they usually have any other hitch classes as well. But a hitch horse is a horse that is in a team of horses, draft horses who are bred for a very flashy knee action. And you see it naturally in their breeding when they trot. Um, gypsy horses obviously don't have that flashy trot. They have a ground covering trot that is meant to go all day. So they're not going to compete at a hitch. They probably look pretty pretty darn pretty, but at the same time, gypsy horses have a very wide variety of color. And a lot of them have pink colorations, or rather, um, Tobiano, all the variations. Um, whereas these horses are bred in three to four different colors at max, and they're bred to look alike as much as possible with really the only variation being the socks and the face marks whereas you're probably never going to get two pink horses that look exactly the same and so we kept going back and forth back and forth with this and every time she would say well gypsy horses have a lot of endurance so do arabians arabians are world famous for their endurance and they're pretty quick with their endurance too they're not just it's not that they can just go all day. They can go all day quickly. Gypsy horses, not. Gypsy horses were created to pull a living wagon where essentially the old version of tiny homes and they were made to pull one or two horses, made to pull that vehicle all day, every day. So yes, gypsy horses are good at endurance, but you're not going to enter a gypsy horse into a dur an endurance competition and expect them to even place. Um, and so we went back and forth like this all day, like a full 24 hours. And finally, finally, she's starting to think really critically. Like sometimes in order to get somebody to start thinking critically, unfortunately, you do have to kind of anger them sometimes. And that wasn't my intention. I wasn't trying to make anybody upset. I was just trying to get a legitimate answer to this question. And nobody was giving it. And the only way I managed to get even just one person giving critical thought to this question, to, to their answer, was to get them upset. 
And it wasn't like I said, it wasn't like I went out and purposely tried to make them angry, but you know, it, it is offensive when somebody says, well, why is your horse worth anything? And um, somebody else just came into the conversation and said, well, there's nothing wrong with looking pretty. And I agree 100%. If you ask me why I have a Shire instead of a Pergeron or Belgian, um, for one, the biggest difference here between this comparison is that my Shire doesn't really cost any more than a Pergeron or Belgian. Whereas a gypsy horse is going to cost you like $12,000 on average and a quarter horse is only going to cost you like two or three. But I digress. Why do I have a Shire with hair versus a Pergeron? Well, for one, Shires are critically endangered and I enjoy having a rare breed. I also enjoy doing my part to preserve rare breeds. Um, I have a Shire because I like the hair. Now, I didn't pay any extra for that hair like people are paying extra for a gypsy versus a quarter horse. Um, I didn't pay any extra for that. But I do enjoy the look of the hair. I think it's very pretty. I get a lot of compliments on it, even when it looks like total crap. Do I curse it sometimes for the troubles I have with it? Yes. But it's a labor of love, you know. It's just like shoveling horse poop to have horses. You, you do what you do because you love it. Um... And you just accept the cost with that. And there are some other reasons, but, you know. I, I have her, and I'm accepting her downsides, and I'm willing to admit the downsides. The difference is, is really the question boils down to, why should somebody pay more for your horse just because it looks pretty? Because like I said, anything a gypsy can do, another horse can do it better. Gypsies, at best, are average at everything. The versatility has its perks, but again, quarter horses are probably the most versatile breed out there. There are jumping quarter horses, there are reining quarter horses, there are trail quarter horses, there are cart quarter horses. They are probably the most versatile breed out there. So, why should I pay $12,000 for your versatile horse when I can pay $3,000 for their versatile horse? And again, this comes up. What am I paying more money for? And the gypsy horse community has always dodged this question. And finally, somebody was like, well, there's nothing wrong with paying for pretty. Agreed. And Sue has finally started giving me some decent answers you know they can be competitive in their weight class they can do carts and look really nice at it you know gypsy horses might do really well in equitation type classes classes where it's not so much about the horse's performance but the overall look of the riding or driving performance and that is a really good answer and it's the first time in 10 years I've gotten that answer and I can respect that answer, and I think the gypsy horse community as a whole should really start to put some thought into this and give real legitimate answers because you're kind of being insulting and, and offensive when you just sit here and say they're good at everything. Especially because that is never going to fly with somebody who has any horse experience. Now, if you're talking to like a 50 year old lady who's never had a horse and wants a horse before she dies, yeah, that might sell them on the gypsy horse. And the, oh, they are naturally super sweet. Yeah, my, my Shire is too. Um, and a lot of court, quarter horses are. My Eclipse out there is a favorite of everybody. Every barn she's ever gone to, people love her more than any of the other horses in the barn because she is so personable and she loves attention. She's super duper sweet, wouldn't hard to fly absolutely adores children and she's a quarter horse and she came that way that's why I got her and so people like me who have experience with other horses even just a couple of years of experience now I have more than a couple but I mean if you have any experience with horses and you go up to a gypsy horse person and you say why should I spend all the extra money on your horse versus just going and getting a quarter horse and you turn around and say well they're excellently behaved and they can do anything that's not gonna fly that is 
no reason for me to spend ten thousand more dollars on your horse and the quarter horse down the road you have to actually sell this breed and you guys are failing it miserably and the thing is is gypsy horses almost never come trained the few that have come trained usually do sell for pretty good money especially when people take them to auction they're selling for a lot of money but as far as your general private treaty sales I almost never see a trained gypsy. It's always weanlings. It's always broodmare prospects or always stud prospects. People almost never even geld their horses in this breed. And it's really bad. It's a really big issue with this breed. Um, and then those who do have the breed don't do a whole lot with them usually. There are a couple of people out there who do a few cart shows with their horses. Um, there it's a couple out there that have done really well in dressage but again like I said yesterday that doesn't mean the breed as a whole would probably do excellent in dressage it's usually just a select few um there are a few who go out there and do some western pleasure with it but really most of the people with the breed don't do anything with the breed except breed it and I think that's a lot of the reason why you have so many people coming up and saying, well, what are they good at? And I also think it's the reason why nobody has a good answer of what they're good at because they're good at making babies. That's what they've been doing for the past 25 years since we've imported them. It's only been recently that anybody has really started to use these horses for anything other than making babies. And so you're talking, I'm going to pay $12,000 for a horse who hasn't had any training or I can go pay $3,000 for a really well-trained kid broke quarter horse. They, don't, they might not be fancy and have super fancy names and super fancy pedigrees and they might be ugly as sin, but hey, they're trained and they're really sweet and kid broke and my kids can ride them. You know, they've been out on the trails a few times and they're only $3,000 versus your horse that is completely unproven. Sell me your horse. And I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that in like the next decade, people start to do a whole lot more with their gypsy horses to start showing them and being able to say, gypsy horses are really good at this. They're not quite so good at this. They'll try their heart out at it, but they're not really all that good at it. And we can start getting some truthful, honest answers.